Thank you for joining us for our complimentary gathering where we will cover a family law topic and then answer three questions that maybe have been posed this past week that can help you if you're watching this. Um, and so maybe we'll just dive right in. Is that good? That's good. That's yes. good. Karen, you and I were talking a little bit earlier today that you had been listening to a podcast, a family law podcast earlier, and um, maybe it raised some interesting questions that might also be valuable to our listeners. Sure. Thank you. Um, this was something that they didn't have time to address on that particular podcast, but it was a question a gentleman had posed around um, they already had their, their divorce, their parenting agreement in place, but their children were moving into different ages. So say the agreement may have been a few years older, you know, like maybe two or three years since they signed it. He was just trying to figure out what his next steps could be to keep that agreement in place with how their family operates now and, and how the kids are changing maybe their activities and, you know, growing up. He didn't think that his agreement would be, you know, held to the 18 years, I guess, span because of all the changes that you anticipate as a child grows. So that was kind yeah. of interesting. They didn't get the chance to address it. So maybe something that we can talk about now. Yeah. Well, you know, parenting agreements, not only are they emotional to negotiate for the parent, um, they're also very hard to wrap your head around because it is not a document that has an 18 plus year duration to it. We, we do try to address current parenting issues. We do try to address big picture parenting issues. And then if parents can make decisions going forward, then maybe they get some more longevity out of their parenting document. But, you know, if your kid enters a new stage of life, enters, you know, maybe goes from elementary school to middle school or middle school to high school, or there's just changes in the child as they grow up, um, you might have some gaps in your parenting plan or your parenting agreement, or in some jurisdictions, it's still included in your overall marital settlement agreement. But in Illinois and in and, and DuPage County, we call it an allocation judgment. And that's your parenting plan, essentially. And it might not cover every parenting issue that you might face as a co-parent. And if your child's growing up and your document is not keeping up or not addressing a specific need, and you are not able to make an agreement with your co-parent about that particular issue, there are provisions within the document that say you should try to discuss and decide. If you can't discuss and decide or communicate with the co-parent and reach an agreement, you do then go to mediation. And so, um, you know, it should be a court approved mediator. You don't have to go back to court to find a mediator. Your document might specify who you need to mediate with. So check your document. If you've got a mediation provision, check if there's an actual mediator that you're supposed to contact. Or a lot of times you might find that you just need to go to a resource that can provide you with a list of approved and trained mediators. And that website's called the Mediation Council of Illinois. So you can Google that, you can look, you know, locate a mediator in your area, and they keep an up-to-date list of approved and trained mediators for family law. And you would meet with that mediator and discuss whatever gaps there are in your parenting plan document to see if we can update it to where your kids are now or to update it to address that specific parenting concern. So that's that's one way to try to fill the, the gaps if you're noticing that it's not a document that's addressing every particular issue because we can't anticipate all parenting issues, right? right. Um, and I think that's another point to maybe remember is that the document that is a parenting plan is not going to address everything. Illinois law allows parenting issues to be modifiable, reviewable. And in, what that really means is that we can change this as the child grows up or as there are other parenting concerns that need to be addressed. When you get divorced or you separate, your financial circumstances, those are pretty much locked in stone. We don't get to keep going back and modifying how much money you might have got out of an asset. Um, once that's agreed upon after 30 days, 
very hard to modify assets or debt allocation. But when it comes to children issues, those are always modifiable for this very reason. You might have a document that does not cover a specific issue. You might have a child that develops a health issue, develops a behavioral issue, or just simply has other interests in life and wants to have a different schedule. You, you can't predict all of it as the child grows up. So in Illinois, parenting decisions, parenting time, as well as financial support for the child, those are always considered modifiable issues. So for the, your original allocation judgment, you know, however long ago that was, there are, you put provisions or attorneys put provisions in there that says to try and fill the gaps, if I'm understanding correctly, you know, try, if you try and work it out amongst yourselves before getting the court involved again, is that safe to say, is that a provision that's typically included? Yeah, I, it would be safe to say that a court wants families to resolve their disputes out of court. And so most agreements prepared by either a judge after a trial or by an attorney will include those alternate dispute resolution options to say you need in good faith to communicate this issue, talk to the other parent, try to resolve it or go to mediation. Let's keep it out of court. The court system actually doesn't want families involved in the court system. However, right. if, you, if you can't mediate because maybe there's an order of protection, maybe there is, um, you know, a substance abuse issue, a mental health issue, or some emergency and you can't mediate, you can still ask for the court to help you resolve that parenting issue if it's an emergency or if there's an impediment to mediation. Yeah. And so... Uh, um, I, I just want to reiterate, it sounds like, you know, while there's always gaps because the child is growing up and circumstance changes, um, it, it doesn't have to, you know, be right back to court. You know, yeah. if you could work it out, that's great. You know, and you don't need a, a document that says, here's the new plan for this year. Yeah. Right. A lot of times we can just update it with a one page agreed order that we just send to the judge. And then if the judge approves it, the judge will sign it and add it to the court file. So we don't have to file a petition, tell the judge we're working on an issue and then have a you know hearing on it. It could be we've reached an agreement. Here's a permanent change. And it's always best to have any permanent changes signed by the judge. And you can do that in, in an expedited manner. It really can be contacting your lawyer to draft up a one-page order that represents that permanent change and then work with the court to have it signed. It's okay. it's it's much easier than doing it maybe the way sometimes people do, filing a petition and then seeing what we can work out. Got it. So, so yeah, you know, I always tell people if it's a permanent change, you better have that approved by the court meeting, sign off on an agreement so that your court file is up to date because that's what's an enforceable agreement. Anything signed by the judge. If you make temporary changes, we're swapping a weekend temporarily. We're doing a holiday slightly different, but it's temporary. Parents can make those decisions and they don't need to involve a mediator and attorney, the court. But if it's a permanent change, that's when at minimum, you should probably just have that permanent change initialed and signed by both parties and then signed by the judge. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Sense. Thank you. So hopefully that addresses, you know, yeah, th there's going to be gaps because parenting is unique to every parent, to every child where we try to provide guidelines for making parental decisions and for a schedule. If there are changes that are needed, your document um, should have provisions that help you with those next steps. How can you resolve those disputes without court involvement? Then at the very end, last resort, if needed, you can seek court involvement. 
makes sense. Thank you. That helps out a lot. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that answered the question that they didn't did. get to, or maybe ran yeah. out of time. I'm sure that the person could have answered it as well, but thanks for bringing it no, to our right. attention. I think it's Thank a good you. one. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we can just spend some time here answering. Um, we've got about three questions that came in through the week that might be helpful to listeners um, as they're either trying to decide if they need to move forward with a legal matter or working with our firm. Um, and, you know, three questions that came in this week. Um, the first one, maybe we can talk about, you know, does the firm use Zoom and how do I use Zoom to meet with anybody at Burt Law? And do I really need to use Zoom for court? You know, maybe we could just address those, take away some, maybe some anxiety about uh, using technology. Um, and, you know, Karen, I don't know, have people been contacting you about, you know, having some concerns about meeting us via Zoom? I, I think the concern is to make sure that um, also they appreciate being ready to meet with us individually, but we're kind of that safe place to land before they go to court. Um, even though ideally folks are more comfortable, we all right, in their version of comfort, dealing with Zoom and doing meetings virtually, you know, when you add court to that, that kind of puts a little layer of, of, of anxiety to that. So always open to schedule a quick call. We walk through things. We go through the court's etiquette. They have guidelines that they have in the, in the court. Um, as we all know, too, certain judges also have protocols to be aware of, too, that will make sure that you're comfortable with and well aware of. So we're definitely available to, to, to coach you through and spend a few minutes to help maybe get you settled in and, and not being, uh, you know, it's just another Zoom call that you'd be present for. Probably the biggest thing to remember is just, you know, join from a laptop or computer, not your phone. Um, that's probably the biggest issue because that'll help with audio, sound, visual, and it also will help you stay grounded too during the during the court st court activity that you're involved in. Absolutely. So Great tip there, Karen, because I can tell you from experience being in court, the parties that join by phone they have a really hard time navigating because a lot of times the judges will want your camera off or your um, audio off until your case is called. And if you're on your phone, they have a hard time navigating, oh, turn my camera on and then unmute myself. And then they're nervous and maybe they're, you know, they then end up getting out of Zoom court. So it's really good if you can, Use a tablet, use a laptop, use a computer for your important court um, appearances. It helps the judge. It helps you. And like you said, we're here to help, you know, any of our clients or parents that we're working with. If you want to spend a few minutes with Karen or any of us, we can always help you know those protocols. Also on our website under virtual divorce attorney, we have some protocols there for how to join a Zoom meeting. It might be slightly different for, you know, other meetings that you have, but just take a look at it. Um, court's a little bit different. We can give you some further instructions on that. But Zoom in our jurisdiction is the primary um, virtual method for court and for meeting at least once or twice with your attorney. Yep, that's great. Okay. Another question we got um, that came in was, how do I make a payment? How can I make an online payment? Um, and so maybe Tyler, you could talk about different ways that we um, bill or invoice and, and, and things that we include so that hopefully people can easily make a payment. Sure. The, um, we do accept online payments as probably our preferred payment. Uh, we do also you know, take checks and, and other forms. But you know, these days, um, online payments uh, have become very secure and convenient uh, for everybody involved um, and we do accept you know payments a, a few different ways um, you know we uh, through our billing system Clio um, our, our practice management system Clio which we also uh, invoice out of you know they <clears throat> that program allows the um, the client uh, to make payments directly from the invoice that they receive uh, via email. Uh, everything is, is done through email, um, you know, and they can go right into the invoice uh, through the links in there and make payments. Um, we do accept most 
major credit cards, I believe. And, you know, uh, it, so it's a, it's a very convenient way to pay. Um, you know, also with a credit card, if you, for whatever reason, you know, don't receive an invoice, um, don't receive links in the invoices, um, you can call the office. We can email separate links for payments, uh, but you can also uh, make payments for your trust account, for your IOLTA account um, electronically uh, through, our, through our system. We also use a program uh, called LawPay, um, which is another uh, way to, uh, to accept payments uh, on behalf of the clients. Um, and I, I believe we, you know, we also can send out links through that program. Um, so we have a, a, a multiple ways to, um, you know, for clients to pay their invoices, pay their retainers, um, you know, and, and stay up to date with us. Uh, everything is, you know, being electronic, the clients receive receipts for everything that they, um, you know, pay for. Uh, so they, they have records and can keep track of what, um, you know, how they're making payments, when they're making payments. Um, and on the flip side, uh, for us, you know, it also keeps track of, you know, when and where and uh, who has, you know, who's paid and, and who has outstanding balances. Um, you know, in a, in a last resort, uh, you know, they, the clients can always call the office. Um, we can't take payments over the phone, um, you know, and we can do everything, do everything that way. If, you know, for whatever reason, there's, you know, clients don't have access to computers, you know, mm -hmm. um, phones, things like that. Well, you know, smartphones anyways, but, you know, they can always call the office and we're able to, uh, you know, take payments over the phone and, um, you know, still provide receipts, you know, for, for uh, services rendered. So there, there's a lot of ways and I think convenient ways. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, it's never the fun part of the process, but, you know, uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. And if I could add just two things to all of that information, just along the lines of ease of paying, if you like QR codes and you just want to scan with your phone or your um, photo app or camera app, um, we have QR codes on our website. So under our tab called Pay Now, you will find these links also, their payment buttons. These are the links Tyler's also talking about. Um, so if you can't find it in your email or your invoice, you can always go to our Pay Now tab and there is a button to pay an invoice and there's a button to pay a retainer. There's also QR codes that you can scan. It will just bring up the payment page right away and you can insert your information um, however you do so. The other thing about how to make a payment um, that people might not know about is that there are financing options. And so again, if you go to our pay now tab on birtlaw.com, you can read about um, client credit through a firm. And if you have a balance or if you need to pay a retainer um, or if you need to pay a flat fee and you would rather pay for it over time, Click the information to learn about client credit, and you can learn how you apply then for financing. It's like a short-term loan for the amount that you owe, but then you can pay over time. So that's just another option on our website that you can look up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I forgot to mention the uh, credit pay or the client pay. Um, no, 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 you didn't forget to mention it. I just thought of it, you know, as another option out there. I don't know if it directly related to the question, but it's a payment option if you wanted to look into it under our pay now tab, or we can send you additional information if you contact us. Um, and then the last question that I think we can cover um, before we break for, for the day, uh, we get a common question about, do you charge for a consultation? And the short answer would be, yes, we do charge a fee for a consultation, but um, our consultations are more of a planning session to give you an analysis of your facts and legal goals 
to also give you legal advice about next steps and things that you can start working on immediately to make your divorce or separation process better. So our consultation is not a meet and greet. It is not um, just to get a feel for if you like to work with us. It's more than that. I'm providing legal advice. I'm providing you with um, tips and next steps and a roadmap to have a most productive start to your divorce process. And so we view that as a limited scope service. We view that as an hour of legal services. And so we do charge for that consultation. And probably the number one question, follow-up question would be, how much do you charge? So our planning session, which is an hour of our time, is for $300. Um, if you are working with a divorce professional, if you're coming from a divorce mediator or you're working with a divorce financial professional, um, call us. We can discuss what needs you have and whether or not there would be a consultation fee because people that are already working with mediators or financial professionals, um, they might already have a lot of that planning process complete. And so we can discuss where you're at in the process and what your future needs are. But just know that if you're, you're contemplating a separation, you're contemplating a divorce, you need more than a meet and greet, we do set our initial clients for that planning session and you will always leave with valuable information about how best to get started. Whether you work with us or not, you're going to leave with legal advice to set you on the right track for a good legal process. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I think that's a good point you know, uh, your planning sessions, your consultations, you know, include legal advice. And that's, um, you know, is w more than a meet and greet and just introduction, you know. Right. Yep. We, we'd love to meet and greet with you. We have these complimentary gatherings every Wednesday. If you'd like to join pose any questions, please contact us either by phone at 630-891-2478. You can contact us through our website at bertlaw.com and submit a contact form and just say you'd like to attend a complimentary gathering or you have a question for a future complimentary gathering and we'll address those questions at our next meeting. Anybody that attends, we have uh, protocols to maintain your privacy and we will share those with you when you RSVP to attend so that um, you are your information, private and personal information is kept confidential. So um, please, anybody, you are welcome to join us. And we you know, use this as an opportunity to get to know one another or to at least answer your general questions. If you need more than general questions answered, that's when we'll go ahead and set you for that planning session so that we can discuss um, more in depth your fa financial, factual, and parenting circumstances. Sounds okay. Good. All good. right. Well, I think this is a good spot to end for today. We covered a lot of great topics about how do we fill gaps in a parenting plan? How do we have those adapt to the changes for a child or parenting relationship? We covered, do you charge for a consultation? How to make a payment? and the use of Zoom for a meeting in court. So I think that is a good place to stop for today. And we look forward to meeting with you all again next week. All right. Take all care. Right. Take care. Bye, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye.